Hi, John Miles here, and I'm going to show the setup and use of the adjustable side lighting iris camera, that's the ASL model. And first, to open the case, you push in on each button while you lift it forward like that, and open it. And you can see the contents here. There's the camera, the illuminator, a spare lens, camera battery charger, and some accessories. So the first step is to lift out the camera. And I like to use uh, my thumb here and two fingers there, like that, set it down. And then lift out the illuminator. And for that, I also like to put my thumb on top and two fingers under it, like this. So these are the two main components. Then the first step is to take off the lens cap. Second, power it on by rotating this uh, rotary switch upward till it's on, on. Check to see it's on the A setting in the MASP that refers to aperture priority, which we use for all iris photography. And then push the button over here to pop up the flash. And also check into the uh, top window of the lens to make sure it's on 0 0.286. And if it isn't, you just pull this down until the number stops turning. The, this will keep turning, but the number will stop at 286. And next, uh, make sure this is on manual focus. That's the rear position. It has an M. And VR is off for all iris photography because you'll always want to use the flash to get good detail and if you're using flash the vibration reduction is not useful. Then the next thing is you can look at the, the back of the camera and check your settings. I usually use f20 and you can also uh, just see that it's on 1 60th. It's not critical. The shutter speed could be 100th or 200th but I use 1 60th. And now it's ready to mount the illuminator. So I hold the camera like this in one hand, and then I hold the illuminator, which is a hood-mounted illuminator here, and you put them together, here's the top view, so that this is at the 9 o'clock position here where the uh, top bar is. And then you just rotate that up until it clicks. You rotate it 90 degrees, and the light guides will be at the 12 o'clock position here. And uh, next is you can check the battery is connected. And uh, now I will show taking a picture of my own iris just to show how easy it is. And if you're doing a picture of your own iris, you put it on autofocus. For other people, you're better off using the manual focus because you can do a better job than the camera in getting a sharp image. And the last step is you turn on the illuminator focusing light, like so. You just turn this dial, it's pointing to the rear in the off position, and you just turn it up and it will adjust the brightness like that. And for the right iris, which I'll take a photo of, you always want to use the lateral light channel, and that's over here. And to do that, you slide the shutter over to that side. So it will only allow the light to go through this channel. Next, um, you can just uh, test this out in autofocus on your own iris. And I just line that up like so. Get a good sharp focus. And there it is, a perfectly good iris photo. And next, to do my left eye, I'm going to slide the shutter over to the right hand side so that the light will only go here because I want it lateral on the left eye. And I'll hold this up, get it centered there, come in nice for a good shot there. And I'll just put that in there. And we have another perfectly good iris photo. And next, um, what you can do here is uh, adjust the exact angle of the lighting. So I'm going to show that and I'll turn off the focus light when I'm not using it so as to conserve the battery. And then um, to use the uh, adjustable feature 
you get the alignment target, which is right here. It slides right down in front of the illuminator compartment like that. And it has a protractor with zero degrees. It's on the lens axis, 10, 20, 30 through 90 degrees. And it attaches with a magnetic mount to the bottom like that. So you have the uh, light guides pointing at exactly 45 degrees. You can see that here, perhaps. That's exactly 45 degrees. And there are these uh, alignment spacers also included, which make it easy to return it to that position, which is standard, without even using the alignment target. But if you do want to try a different angle, you just loosen the three wing nuts on the side and bring that out like so. And then you just dial this back to the rear position. You just move this alignment spacer all the way so it looks so it's back here at the rear. And then you can position this, for example, right at uh, 70 degrees. And I'll hold it now this way. And while it's lined up, you just torque up that uh, thumb nut there. And this one. And I'm also going to tighten the inner one so that all three of them are in the right position. And uh, like I said, this usually goes out back there. And it will look like this when it's on the 70 degree. You can see it right there. That's for extreme side lighting. And just to demo that, um, I'll just hold it up and take another photo. Turning on the focusing light, make sure I can get a good shot there, and I'll line this up. So this is a, uh, with a, 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 a extreme side lighting picture, and then uh, you can do that to the other side the same way, and when you're done, the first thing is to turn off the focusing light, and then loosen these three and push that all the way forward and it has a cutout to hold the light guide clamp the light guide clip exactly at 45 degrees slide that into the notch it's just the right size and then you'll tighten these three clamping knobs and that is um, how you get a good side lighting iris photo you can uh, also use uh, a chin rest, it's sometimes good to have, and I have one here to demo. <clears throat> so this is the economy model, $500 model. There's also more deluxe one that's $1,200, but this is the most popular style because it's pretty sturdy. You can break it down. There's a video that shows how to do that, how to put it together and take it apart. And when you get it with the camera, there's a... Uh, quick release plate already mounted on the camera and to put this onto the chin rest you push it into the front first so it's tilting down a little bit like that and then you push it down this way and it'll click but the other step you have to do is you squeeze this together real tight make sure that's tight tightly attached there and that's all there is to it to mount the camera and uh, again, we can take a sample photo. The camera is on. I'll just turn on the focusing light here. I'll take a right iris, so I'm sliding the shutter this way to make sure only the light is only coming through here. And then I can uh, simply line up the camera. And I just push the picture taking button again. And uh, for my own picture, I have to use autofocus. And as you can see here, we have a perfectly uh, good iris photo. And you can play that back on a monitor or a computer. And so um, when you're using the chin rest, this is the knob you use to focus. So. With macro photography, you generally want to move the whole camera and lens together, and that's why we use this focus track. And you have to uh, position it by pointing it directly at the center of the eye, right in the center of the pupil should be the center of the field of view. 
And to get that alignment, you can tilt this up and down. You won't need to move it very much. And you can also swivel it this way until it's pointing straight at the eye. And then you have the subject, the client, looking straight in at the center of the lens. There will be a small reflection dot there. And then at that point, the eyeball is perfectly aligned with the camera lens, and you can take the picture at that point. Also, to help align it, you want the eye, for this to be level, you want the uh, center of the iris about an inch to an inch and a quarter below the top of the forehead rest. And you can uh, adjust the chin cup like this accordingly so that it's just exactly right. And that is how you use the chin rest. Now I'll also show how to use this with a computer, which is very simple actually. And just to show an example, I have a computer right here. It is a Windows 10 computer. And the software you want to use is called Digicam Control, and you get it from digicamcontrol.com. And so I'll get a, a cord I have here. When you get the camera in here, you'll have a, a USB extension cord as well as the camera to USB cord that looks like this. And the one you get with the camera is kind of short. It's only like two feet long. So I usually prefer to use uh, this extender cord, a USB extension cord. And then you just put that in there. Uh, you open up the top side rubber covering there, and you'll find a tiny little opening for this. You put that right in there. And now this is a Windows 10 computer with Digicam control. And when I plug in the camera and it's turned on, it'll automatically recognize it. And um, likewise, um, I already had the software running. If you haven't had the software running ahead of time, you could just start it. And the icon is just like a little uh, red circle with a gray colored uh, aperture symbol in there. And so the next step, I'll bring this to the foreground. <coughs> So let's see how that looks. Um, I'll bring up the Digicam control software. It looks kind of like that when you start off. There's no pictures, but the pictures you take will show up down here. And uh, I'm making another video that goes into more detail using Screencast-O-Matic so you can see the actual uh, desktop in full detail filling the frame. But I just wanted to show how easy it is to use this. And um, you have a couple of choices here. You can use the camera in the usual way, which I'll do again by simply uh, taking another picture. Again, all I have to do is turn on the focusing light. The camera needs the focusing light in order to get a good autofocus, and you need a, a focusing light as well. So you can adjust the brightness by turning that dial. And then you can also take the picture the same way by pushing the picture-taking button. So, and I usually uh, pull one lid down, and there I've taken the picture, and it shows up on the screen right away. It'll pause for a moment, and then it'll go back to uh, your control panel, and at that point, after you confirm it's a good picture, you just point this at the other eye, and I'm looking at the left eye, I'll move the shutter accordingly. And likewise, I'll hold my lid down a little so we can see the whole iris centered nicely. And uh, the light is only coming from this one in that setting. And there it is again. Now, there are ways you can look at this uh, in full screen. Right now it's uh, magnified, but you can zoom in and you can pan and uh, you can flip between the two pictures just by using the left and right arrow key. So at this point you can see how you could actually just do your assessment of the iris uh, at this point. And uh, you can also plug it into a monitor. You, you, know, you can plug the camera directly in, but it's better to go through the computer. 
and I have it set up so that it keeps a copy on the chip as well as leaves a copy on the hard drive. And that way I've got a backup copy. And uh, you can do editing and enhancing and cropping as well, but these are just the basic steps to get a good iris photo. And one other thing is there is also a extender cord you can use for an alternate source of the uh, focusing light. You can pull the battery pack off, you know, it just attaches with a couple of magnets here. And I usually prefer it that way instead of having cords, but the camera does come with an extra cord that you can plug into a USB socket on your computer and uh, that's just a backup power source. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it, to take a good iris photo. You have the good illuminator, side lighting, focusing light, and uh, the software is free from digicamcontrol.com. And if you want more information, you can go to my website at milesresearch.com. And there's also the user guide for this ASL camera. And even this video will be available as well on the website. There are other models that are also detailed on that website, but you'll find most of the information on the links page. So that's pretty much it, and I'll see you next time.